Morning, folks. My name is Chris, and I'm an engineer here at AcroMan. This is part one of a two-part series on an introduction to VPX. Today we're going to be discussing VPX, how it relates to VME technology, um, some terminology, uh, as well as the VITA standards behind it. Now it's important that you have a basic understanding of VME technology uh, before we proceed, because I'll be referencing a lot during this presentation. I'd also like to note that all this information that I'm presenting here is available on a white paper called Introduction to VPX, available on our website at www.acromag.com. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So, what is VPX? VPX is actually a collection of three VITA standards. Um, you have VITA 46.0, which is your base specification. You have VITA 48, which is termed the VPX Ready specification, which gives details on cooling. And then you have VITA 65, also termed as Open VPX. Now, we're going to be going through those one by one here today to give you a good feel for how they all work together to create VPX system. Before we get too far though, I, I do want to describe uh, some VPX terminology. That's a VITA.standard. Um, now VITA, in their wisdom, has decided to basically create these dot standards to give optional electrical or mechanical specifications that enhance the base standard. So for example, in terms of VITA 46, which is the base standard for VPX, there are multiple optional dot standards below it. Now, such as VITA 46.1, 46.3, etc., etc. Now, these standards are not required to actually implement the base specification. There are a lot of optional settings. And you'll see those as, as I go through my talk here today. Uh, but just keep that in mind. Um, you know, if, if, uh, if you're compliant to a DOT standard, um, a lot of times all the stuff in your system has to be compliant as well. So, what is VPX? Well, I'm going to start that discussion by starting with how is VPX similar to your VME? VPX was designed as the next generation VME system. Basically, designers took a look at the VME system and said, you know, user I.O., um, throughput um, was just getting too slow for all the new technology they have in the market today. So they designed this new standard to enhance the new bus, uh, new bus types, high-speed serial buses specifically, and to utilize them in a system. So what does VPX have in common with VME? Well, first of all, they kept the same basic card size. So you still have your 3U, 6U card size. They also uh, kept you know, your standard rear transition modules. They're pretty much the same as they were back in VME. Um, now, in order to improve the speed of the backplane, they've actually removed the old VME connectors and replaced them with new connectors from Tyco. Um, specifically, they're called the multi-gig RT connectors, and those connectors are capable of up to about 10 gigabits per second uh, data transfer rate, which gives you a lot more signaling options than you had in the original VME. On the screen now, you'll see an uh, example 3U and 6U connectors. Uh, much like in VME, you have uh, P012 um, for the 3U card, and you, know, you have P012, 3, 4, 5, 6 for the 6U. Much like in VME as well, um, your P0 connector, in this case, is going to have under power and control signals. And P1 and P2 in the 3U is basically going to contain all your data bus connections from slot to slot, as well as all of your rear I.O. And in 6U, you can notice the availability of a lot more pins, generally, once again, geared towards adding a whole bunch more user I.O. Now, some of the differences from the VME. In the traditional VME64 system, it relies on a, a parallel bus. Now, basically what that means is that if you bought a VME backplane and had an SBC, single board computer, to plug into that backplane and some add-on module, you could plug in any of those boards in any slot, and it'd work. Because that backplane is shared between all the slots. Well, in a VPX system, they've moved from the low-speed parallel bus to high-speed serial buses. Um, and as I mentioned before, those dot specs, there are actually quite a few dot specs regarding to this. There are several of them that give you the option of what type of high-speed serial bus you implement, such as GPP Ethernet, PCIe, or Rapid I.O. Now, back to the diff big difference with uh, high-speed serial buses. You, you know in the diagram there that shows a simple VPX system, I show uh, PCIe, in this case, four PCIe lanes 
connecting between slot one and slot two, then another four between slot one and slot three. Now, serial buses are point to point, meaning that the bus is not shared. Basically, um, you have to have a direct connection between two boards in order for them to communicate with each other. So in this case, if you bought a plug-in module with an EPX, uh, SBC, say you plug the SBC into slot one and your I.O. module into slot two, um, you'd have you know, a good connection between them. However, if you were to move that VPX connector from, or the VPX uh, SBC from slot one to slot three and kept it in your I.O. module in slot two, you no longer are gonna have a direct point-to-point -point serial bus connection between the two. And that really is one of the big differences uh, between BNB and VPX is the serial bus connection itself, the move to that bus standard, as well as how in the world you connect all your boards together. Now, the three uh, examples, the drawing three example I give right there is relatively straightforward. However, the VPX backplane itself can get awfully complicated. Uh, right now, you on your screen, you see an example of a 15 slot VPX backplane. Now imagine how complicated the routing can get from slot to slot on that backplane when you have to do point to point connections. You know, the big question is, is how do you do it? Um, the Vita 48 base standard it does have a couple recommendations, but is rather silent on that. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, the next standard I'm going to discuss here is Vita 48, which is the Ready standard. Now, Ready stands for the Ruggedized Enhanced Design Implementation. And this standard basically gives you all of the mechanical requirements for all the different types of cooling on the board. Uh, for example, there are several Vita 48 dot standards that give the different uh, requirements for the different types of cooling, such as forced air cooling, uh, conduction cooling, as well as liquid cooling. Now, for, for point of simplicity, uh, Acromag has standardized on three separate types of cooling um, and pitch boards that correlate to the dot standards here. And I'll just read through those here real fast. Um, first of all, you have the air cooling method, um, which is going to have a standard pitch of plenty. And by pitch, I mean thickness of your board. Um, a point A is basically what you saw in the old BME standard, so point eight inches. Um, and this is basically, you know, a standard forced air cooled board. You have a fan in there cooling the system. Uh, the second uh, method is a conduction cool board uh, with a thickness of 0.85 inches. And that basically gives the added advantage of having a conduction cool plate on the top of the board to help remove heat. Um, and of course, this has an associated plate um, on the chassis as well, which is defined in the standards. Um, and then finally, you have a conduction cooled ready board. Now, a ready board is unique from a conduction cool is that it actually has metal plates covering both sides of the board, as is shown in the picture on, on the slide. Um, the advantage of this is it supports what's called level two maintenance. Now, for those of you doing military applications, well, you probably already know that level two maintenance is basically a board that is field replaceable. Um, the additional metal covers gives all the electrical components on the board electrical protect, protection uh, from any ESD that you might have from carrying it around. Uh, it also makes it relatively you know, easier to slide in and out when you place it with systems. Um, just a quick note too, when you're looking at these boards, is that the production cooled ready generally only fit in chassis that are compliant to uh, the ready standard, which is Vita 48.2, um, whereas the other two air and production cool generally fit in almost any other chassis. That actually concludes part one of our introduction to, introduction to VPX presentation. Uh, stay tuned for part two, where we'll be discussing uh, OpenVPX.